Hey, uh, from the neighborhood quarter guy here. And it feels like just yesterday that I was talking about the death of Monty Elm, and now we've lost another intergaming icon, one much more significant. Leonard Nimoy passed away today from complications due to CLPD. Those of you who are unaware, Leonard Nimoy is most famous for bringing the character Spock to life in the original Star Trek series and movies. Gamers may know him well as the voice of Master Xehanort from the Kingdom Hearts series. In any case, he was a great actor, a great entertainer, and from what I've heard, a very good man. My condolences to his family and friends, and to all his fans. Rest in peace, Leonard Nimoy. Live long and prosper. Now to break the melancholy. Just what is the deal with this dress I keep seeing on the internet lately? It's like, people are saying it's gold and white. Other people are saying it's black and blue. And I say, why the heck does it matter? It is a dress that happens to appear in different colors to different lighting conditions. It's not something to get all up in a tizzy over. <sighs> Sometimes I worry about humanity if they're worried about a friggin' dress. In any case, this, the results of my straw poll are in, and the next countdown, as chosen by you, well, the topic anyway, is my top 10 most disappointing games. Yeah, it's gonna be those games that I was excited for for one reason or another, but ultimately let me down big time. I'm already working on the script for that, I've got a few segments done for that, and I hope to get it out sometime in March. And with that, on to the fourth wall mailbag. Remember, I only take questions for the mailbag through my YouTube private messaging. First question comes from 13 Hearts, who asks, Will you ever do another Clash of Q? I've been thinking about that. I would like to do another Clash of Q, but that would have to depend on what topic I get. I was recently introduced to Sengoku Basara Samurai Heroes, and would like to do a Clash of Q at some point between Sam Samurai Heroes and a Dynasty Warriors game. The only Dynasty Warriors games I've actually played, though, are spin-offs, so if anyone would like to recommend a proper Dynasty Warriors game to play, I would much, I would much appreciate it. Nifinland asks, Don't you think WayForward and Capcom should also make a remastered Darkwing Duck game? That would be freaking awesome. Back in the days of the NES and Super NES especially, Capcom and Disney were a great partnership. They made some really great games, like Aladdin for the Super NES, the Avermint, the uh, previously released DuckTales, Jim Nairest Rangers, Darkwing Duck, which is why I saw DuckTales Remastered as a really good thing. I'm glad it happened, and to be honest, I would like to see them partner up again. And with Darkwing Duck, that would be awesome. The shoot up gameplay, somewhat reminiscent of Mega Man, the characters, there's even potential for new stages and new villains to fight. I mean, there was this one ROM hack I saw, the Darkwing Duck NES game, that out featured an additional stage with Mega Duck. I'm surprised that it wasn't actually in the original game. That is something I really would like to see at some point. Next question comes from SpooniBard13, who asks, would you ever consider doing a music countdown? To be honest, yeah, I would. However, there are a few, there are a few things that make me hesitate on that. One being the obvious copyright issue. When it comes to uh, video games, it's easier, to, it's easier to do a vocal countdown because your voice is over the music and the footage is unique due to each playthrough. But with music countdowns, you just, you have the music for the most part, just blaring without any interruption, unless they take the approach that Green Scorpion did to music countdowns. There are actually a few games and series I'd like to try doing music countdown on, countdown on at some point, like The Wonderful 101, the Toho series, and Shovel Knight, to name a few. But I'm not sure if that's going to happen, really. Next question comes from Zero Two, who asks, What are your thoughts on Monster Hunter Frontier? Interesting thing, that. For those of you who don't know, uh, Monster Hunter Frontier is an MMORPG adaptation of the Monster Hunter series. From what I've seen of it, it looks pretty interesting. It's got some neat, unique monsters. 
most intimidating of which is the Raviente, which is by far the biggest monster I've ever seen in the series. As it turns out, you can only tackle the Raviente in groups of 16. At least I think it's 16. Was it 32? I forget which. But one thing slightly turns me off to the idea. The subscription model. Yeah, I know it's continuously evolving and all that, but I am personally not that big a fan of the subscription model. The only game I've really played using the subscription model was Fantasy Star Online, and uh, I didn't really use it as much as I thought I would. So I'd rather just play a full game, pay full price for a full game, or go for a well-done free-to-play model game like League of Legends. Other than that, eh, I'm not sure. Final question comes from Sako Kiryakoshan, who asks, Ouija versus Sanic Hedgehog for Death Battle? 